What's up guys, welcome back to another episode of Abandoned Adventures and yes, this is probably what you're thinking, I am filming a mukbang so let me explain what's going on here and what I've got because it's kind of an odd mix of things First, I've ordered this um, pizza from Pizza Hut, it's an ottoman hot and spicy, this is my go-to um, pizza and go-to um, pizza shop as well um, my normal sushi place was closed, so I couldn't order from there. So I ordered from another store and try and bring these close to the camera. I'm not sure if you can really see them, but these are eight mini rolls, salmon inside. Normally my go-to as well, salmon and avocado rolls. I also ordered another thing from the store as well. This is like a little mini platter. It's not too bad. It's got lots of different things on it. We'll give that a try. Not sure if you can see that or not. I apologize if you can't see the food really well. Um, these are the Mia Garin noodles. Also another personal fave of mine. Just in case if I get extra hungry. <laughs> and if, if just in case it's a long video and we do get to that point, I will have to cook them up though if it does go there and also another personal favorite of mine apple juice because i'm not sure if you can drink um alcohol on youtube or not so we've got apple juice so yeah um this will be very similar to my um podcast i'm just trying to work out what to go for first um let's go for the sushi so yeah, as I was saying, um, this will be um, very similar to the um, podcast that I filmed for New Year's. So I've kind of got like a list of topics that I will um, talk about. Because I feel like a lot has happened in the Urbex community over the last month. And not a lot at the same time. And there's a few stuff to catch up on. And I apologise. Um, for not um, uploading podcasts as regularly as I said I would, I will try and film them more often. But yeah, and depend on how this goes, this this might become the new thing. I I definitely wouldn't mind this at all, even though it did cost me a fair bit to order all this food and get it delivered and whatnot. So yeah, um, the first thing I want to talk about is. The unfortunate fires that have happened at um, locations lately. Um, the military base um, in particular had a massive grass fire about a month ago, just after New Year's. Like, nothing suspicious and it wasn't vandals, it was just an, an unfortunate grass fire, which I think is horrible. But from what I've heard, um, all the buildings, well, majority of the buildings were okay, and on my recent recent visit there, which is now uploaded to the channel, if you want to check it out. We couldn't, the part that we explored, we couldn't really see any evidence of there being a fire. Like, if I didn't know about that, I wouldn't have guessed there was a fire there. So, maybe happened in a different part of the base because I did think it happened on the far right side and we explored around the middle and the left side. So, that makes sense why we didn't see anything. And there was a fire at this abandoned high school as well. On New Year's Eve, which is unfortunate as well. Because I've been there twice. The first visit was August. And the second visit was November. And this is when I was taking my um, leave, let's say. And so I was just taken photos, I wasn't filming for the channel, but the place was really good. The second visit I spent close to two and a half hours there. And I really wanted to go back to film it, but I wasn't planning on doing it in this like first part of the year. I just don't want to, you know, keep on going back to the to a same location over and over and over again. So I was going to wait for a little while until I was going to go back. But unfortunately, um, that got lit on fire New Year's Eve, and the latest um, update on that is that's all boarded up, new cameras. So I don't think I'm going to get into that anytime soon, unfortunately. 
it is a really cool location and a lot of urbexes um, have hit it up over the last few months. It's become quite a popular spot. Mm, the sushi is good. It's really missing the avocado, to be honest though. I love avocado. But just the salmon will do, I guess. And also, um, I actually haven't really gone out to film, like, any new locations lately. Um, that I previously haven't been to. Because this, this might be a controversial topic and people might get pissed off at me for saying this. But I really do think Urbex in Australia is dying. There's not really many locations out there compared to, say, a few years ago when I started all of this. There's not as many people. I haven't realised anyone new in the scene over, like, last year. And in a way, it's just like... Obviously, like... Fewer the people, probably the better, but it's also good to have new people constantly coming through, more locations and everything. So, and new people getting interested in the hobby is really what keeps it going. So I think it's quite unfortunate. I haven't really found anything lately. There was this, um, honestly I'm not sure if it was even abandoned or not, but we did anyway, so it's kind of like, when I walked in, there was like no evidence of really, obviously no one was living there, um, but there was evidence of like construction and I wasn't sure if it was like proper abandoned or not. I don't think it is because I went back the other day and there was construction workers there, so. And it was actually a really cool location. There was stuff still inside, so I really don't understand why they'll leave stuff inside if they're like renovating it or something. Like, it was a really bizarre place. Um, I did this abandoned um, truck depot last weekend as well, which wasn't much. It was just a quick explore, just because we're in the area. And outside of that, I haven't done any new locations. All the locations that I've been to, I've revisited. I've went back to those abandoned silos again lately as well. Um, I actually went back. I revisited early January, after New Year's. Then I went back a few days ago and it's it's the most boarded up place I've ever seen, to be honest. There was new fencing, like you, you can't put a hole in it, even if you wanted to. There's barbed wire everywhere on top of the fence. There's really no getting into, getting into it, which is unfortunate. Um, and also, Abandoned Oceana, who you might recognise from my Sydney trip, is going to be in a lot of upcoming videos because she just had a trip down to Melbourne and we did lots of explores. I took her to some of my personal favourites, like the military base, um, the abandoned rope works, which is the next video to come out, one of my personal favourites. I got in my top 10. Um, what else did we do? There's this really cool abandoned house we did. So yeah, with her, I really just revisited some personal favorites and locations that I really wanted to get to the film so really nothing new but I'm planning on getting to new locations like as quick as possible because I do have a couple there's that abandoned university dorms that everyone's been raving on about which I still haven't done even though I do live kind of close to it so I got to hit that up before that's gone there's this abandoned hospital that everyone's been going to as well, which I've found. And to be honest, I'm not sure if it's 100% bando or not, but might as well give it a look. And yeah, that's, there's a couple of other smaller locations which aren't really worth a film. But I'm really keen on hitting up regional areas. Um, I've got a couple regional trips planned, which I can't wait for. So expect lots of um, good regional videos um, this year as well. And also on the topic of Urbex Stein, like I was actually talking about this with Ben Nurciana, um yesterday. Like try and name 
five Aussie Urbexes on YouTube who post consistently, like, I want to say consistently, like, at least once a month. Really, nobody comes to mind. You can't even name five, I don't think. I don't even think there is five, to be honest. We definitely need more um, Aussie Urbexes to take up YouTube, in my opinion. Way too many people do TikTok. And I do say that once having a TikTok account. So I kind of dissing myself there, but anyways, I don't, I don't use it anymore. I'm not a TikTok junkie. Um, so yeah, I think we need to like, more, way more people need to do YouTube because I really do enjoy um, watching other people's content on YouTube. And I really want to see a wide variety out there. Like, there's a couple good, solid Aussie Obex YouTube channels out there, but there really isn't many, unfortunately. And just like a name, five Aussie Obexes that consistently post on YouTube in the comments if you can. <laughs> but that's the challenge for this video. But there is, and there's definitely um, Urbexes out there that deserve way more recognition in my opinion. Also, I think, also I'll clear up like in person about why I was um, so quiet during the, um, the abandoned house which I uploaded um, when I upload this video, that would have been uploaded like two and a half weeks ago. Let me start with the pizza here. So yeah, the reason why I was so quiet in that video was um, I was there by myself and I was pretty nervous about homeless people because I, myself and Obex Dan had a homeless encounter there last year. So I did think it was a possibility. So yeah, I'm sorry about that guys. The video just cut out there a little bit. And also I wasn't sure where to set up the camera or not. So I'm not sure if this is way too far out or not. I didn't want to sit it too close because you really don't want to see me eating <laughs> because I am a messy eater sometimes. But yeah, I think I feel like this is a perfect distance. You can still kind of see my face. And also, if you haven't recognized, this is the spot where I filmed my Q&A video back during the, um, I think it was the first lockdown, second lockdown, back in one of the lockdowns in 2020. So we're back. But yeah, as I was saying about the abandoned house, myself and Urbex Dan had a homeless encounter there, which was like truly bizarre about a year ago. Like this guy came in, we said hello, he had bags, I think there was food in them. And he claimed to like own the place and he was just following us around and he was asking why we were there. And we're like, we're just exploring, just looking around. And he's like, you could have just called me up, which we both thought was hilarious. It's just like, bro, how? We don't have your number. Like, the whole thing was really weird. We ended up leaving and the guy just kind of followed us out. It was a really strange encounter. So that's what I was like, kind of like, afraid of. And plus, when I went the other week, I went last year. There's really no signs of um, homeless people there. So I don't know what that's all about. I'm pretty sure I say this in the video as well, but there's there was apartments right next to it and there was people on the outside. So when I was on the um, right side of the house, next to the apartments, like, I talk at like this volume and they hear me and it's just like, I'm not a big fan of taking risks like that. I want to be careful as possible. As some of you probably already know, I had that incident at Lurundal back in April last year. And I really don't want anything similar happening again. Because like, I believe all it takes is one neighbor having a shitty day, one Karen, whatever you want to say. 
that calls the cops, one cop having a bad day and you just end up with a fine. And you really don't want, or worse, and you don't want that happening, so. And you obviously don't want to get caught, so. I always try and be careful with the locations that I go to, going in, going out. And when, I, when I'm in there, I'm like, be aware of my surroundings and all that. So yeah, if I, if I was talking at this volume on the right side of the house, I would have heard me. And it's just like, who knows, I could, could have been having a crappy day and just decide to call the cops or... Because the location's getting vandalised quite a bit. And it could be just like, oh, it's someone smashing up the place, which, which I wasn't. And they just call the cops on me. So I feel like you always want to be careful in those types of situations. So that's why I was on really quiet in that video. So yeah, I want to talk more about the upcoming videos. The video which would have been out just before this one of the abandoned work works. I think that video was a blast. That was so much fun being in there. We had, we had a great explore there. Even though it was kind of empty and we were just horsing around for a little bit of it, it was still great. We obviously didn't like vandalize anything. I think the trolley scene of Stan's photography is really funny. So that's why I kept that in the video. And yeah, I think it's just overall hilarious video. Like, I really appreciate those guys of like, Derelict Utopia, Stan's photography, Left in the Dark as well being in my videos and collaborating with them because I think like three or four of us together create really good content and every video with them in it is a hoot and a half. I love it. So if you guys are watching this, I appreciate like exploring with you guys so much. So shout out to them. And also I filmed the abandoned power house and had, not bizarre, but kind of had an encounter with construction. There was like, there's actually signs up there now. I don't know how long they've been there for. It says they're going to demolish it. I don't, I hope not. I hope they don't demolish it. But there was signs saying they were going to demolish it. And there was this like yellow truck that cranked in and there. And we're like, what's this doing in there? And like, no one was using it when we walked in, so like, eh, whatever, walked in. Went up to the roof and saw someone working and then we were like, oh shit. So I kind of like, we ran down the stairs, ran out. Then there was another truck that came out of nowhere. And like the gates to the location were wide open, so that was, I guess, a red flag. So another truck came out. And then the guy on the truck, the yellow truck that I'm pretty sure left, you'll see that in the video. And yeah, so we're pretty lucky we didn't get caught. And I think security started it down at that place because we're there around midday and security went to patrol at midday at that location and we didn't see anything. So I think we're good on that part. So yeah, those are just a couple of upcoming videos. This pizza is so good, it's honestly my favourite, I love it so much. I'm probably not going to eat all of this in one sitting because I'm not that hungry even though the last time I ate was like, I think around 11 o'clock, I didn't really have a big lunch. I had eggs and bacon at 11 o'clock which my favourite um, breakfast morning time meal. Then I had an ice cream around midday and that's really the last one I've had. So I should be hungry, but I'm not really that hungry to be honest. So I might save the rest of this for later because I doubt I'm going to finish this. And if you're wondering um, what's on my pizza, Jesus, <laughs> that's hot. Sometimes it's really spicy, sometimes it's more spicy than others. I don't know. 
It's really strange, but anyways. So sometimes I choose to get bacon rashes on it, but it's $3.30 extra, so I didn't go with it today since I'm ordering the extra food. But they got aioli drizzled on top of it, onion, salami, um, Italian sausage, um, jalapeno, is, is which what makes it so hot, chili flakes, normal like tomato based cheese. Sometimes I get stuffed crust as well, which I think is phenomenal, but again, that costs extra, so I didn't get it today. So yeah. That is pretty much what's on the pizza. I'm going to get some serviettes real quickly. I hope this video does well. I'm missing Mary at first sight. <laughs> because I'm filming this like seven o'clock, Mary at first sight's already started. <laughs> And if you guys don't know, Married at First Sight is um, a TV show here in Oz where strangers get paired up and married. There's always sorts of drama, cheating scandals, recouplings, and all that kind of fun stuff. <laughs> I don't know why I watch it. I, I just do. I, I think it's a total laugh, to be honest. I don't take it seriously at all. But I don't know. I, I just love it. I think, like I said, I think the show's a total laugh. And the dinner parties are the best part. That they are so they're wild every night. And I also want to say a big, big um thank you and shout out to um Ben and Oceana for coming down to Melbourne and joining me on my videos. And if you're not subscribed to her or follow her on Instagram, her links will be in the description. So make sure you go subscribe and follow her because she does produce some, some really good quality photos and um, videos. So I'm pretty sure you'll be happy with her content. Her photos edited really well. So yeah, one of the best um, urbex photographers in all of Australia, in my opinion. Alright guys, I think I'm gonna have to unfortunately um cut this video shorter than what than what it would have been because as I've said I've got lots of content out there and obviously those are fairly decent sized videos and it's kind of taken up all the storage and I'm running out of storage really quickly here and I don't want to obviously delete any footage from the previous videos I filmed, so I do think I only have about maybe I'm not sure if you guys caught what I'm saying there, but yeah, as you can see there, it cut out again, so I don't know how much longer I got left. I think I honestly got five minutes to talk. It's like when it comes to the Urbex, I, I think I could go on all day because I feel like when I'm with my Urbex mate, it's like exploring and all that. I, I can I could go on about Urbex and urbex related stuff for like ever. <laughs> I could legitimately probably sit here um, talking for two, three hours about a wide variety of stuff in the community. But unfortunately, I don't think we have that type of time. Um, let me get a sushi back. I'll finish up this. So yeah, okay, so I think I'm gonna have to like wrap it up and I have one final topic of conversation here. But yeah, honestly, there hasn't been much going on in the scene over the last month since I last did one of these um, podcasts, if you want to call it that. And nothing really going on in my urbex life to really um, catch up on. I've pretty much um, said it all. And I don't want this to um, turn into um, my opinions on certain stuff within the community because I don't want to get cancelled. <laughs> and because, yeah, just don't want to get cancelled, don't want people in the community mad at me, so I think I've learnt my lesson from past experiences, I don't really want to talk about my opinions on shit going on, 
So I think I'll keep my mouth shut there. I've probably gone on too long now. <laughs> mm. Shushi is so good. Like, I went 18 and a half years without sushi. Like, I didn't touch sushi until like December 2019. After an explore one day, I'm thinking, why not? Let's do it. Let's try something new. And I've been addicted ever since. I think I've gone sushi like seven times over the last seven days. It's it's crazy. It's it's a, it's an addiction at this point, honestly. But it's bloody delicious. Also, another idea that I just came up with on the spot, like I could probably even do this on Instagram and all that. Like, I'm making into a quick kind of like podcast video of its own. If you guys want to know like more information about me, my personal life, etc., like I could do a Q and A video on that, and you guys can like ask me questions if you want to find out more about me. And what I'm like in real life outside of OBEX, because not a lot of people know. So, yeah, if that sounds like something you guys would be interested in, I'm more than happy to film a video like that. And also, I'm going to put a quick piece of footage in from the Powerhouse video right here. Because I wore a bandana that day. I've been getting into like wearing bandanas lately. I used to wear them all the time when I was younger. So let me know what you think of me wearing a bandana. <laughs> Alright explorers, so I think I'm going to end the video right here. I don't really want to stay on this roof too long. If I suit the law, if I should just chuck it out the window and never wear one again or... Just let me know your opinions in the comments. Hmm. That's so good. Understand. Demolish that. I know as well. Apple juice is kind of unconventional. I know lots of people like orange juice. But I think apple is far superior. Black currant as well. My <laughs> list for top three would be black currant, apple juice, truck. Orange, not even top five. I don't like orange juice. That might be a controversial opinion in itself, saying I don't really like orange juice. But yeah, anyways, back to um, urbex related topics. Oh, that's right. That's what I was going to do as well. Um, Talk more about New Year's Eve because when I filmed on my first podcast video, the year, New Year's Eve hadn't happened yet. So I'm sure you'd be willing to find out how that night went. Um, so yeah, I met up with um, Derelict Metobius, Dance Photography again. We met up at 7 o'clock, um, checked the location, see if it was accessible, what it was, had a quick look around, went to the top. Got some photos, um, then went back down to get something to eat for dinner. We met a couple really nice people in there that we go along with well, chatted to a little bit. So if you guys are watching this video, hope you guys are doing well. Um, so we went out after meeting them, we went out for dinner, came back. Watched the 9.30 fireworks, which didn't live up to expectations. It was kind of pathetic. We, we started booing it. <laughs> so, yeah, it wasn't great. Um, then we um, took a drinks break, so we left again. Then we came back around 10.30. Met up with the two people who came with us again. And then we realised, like, doors had been kicked in and lots of things had been smashed up and a bunch of um, teenage hoons um, had showed up and had pretty much started destroying the place, graffitiing it, which was um, kind of unfortunate, to be honest. I didn't really want to witness that. So, yeah, it's really sad. We just kind of um, stayed away from them for the night. But, yeah, the midnight fireworks... 
were better, I suppose, than the 931s. They were almost identical there. Didn't live up to expectations at all, to be honest. Well, the, night, the night was great. The fireworks just weren't. I'm guessing it was because um, the rooftop fireworks were cancelled. I didn't know that was like such a massive part of the fireworks. Like that's legit like 80-90% of the fireworks down here, that rooftop fireworks. I, I didn't realise that. I thought it would still be a decent showing. But I hope it's a bigger, um, more bigger fireworks next year. And also here's another thing about me. When I was younger, um, I used to eat a lot, like, a lot really fast. But these days, last few years, I kind of just nibble at my food, if you've kind of noticed. I don't eat a whole lot. Especially, especially comparing to like, three, five years ago. I don't know if it's camera shy or not, but anyways. I think I'm gonna end the video right here, guys. I think, yeah, I'm probably about to run out. I love that. that, that's hilarious, I'll say. It's probably about to run out of storage than it does. But anyways, I think I should wrap this up kind of quick. Because I am getting kind of full as well. And this isn't much better, I just don't want to be here, like, just talking and not eating as well. So yeah, I think we're gonna wrap it up. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it, because I think it is different, so let me know what you guys thought and if I should do it again or not. But yeah, if you guys liked it, like, comment, subscribe, do all that fancy stuff, and peace out.